When you think about insecurity, the first thing you probably jump to is the external, right? Your body, uh, something physical, some type of attribute or characteristic that people can see. And many of our insecurities are rooted in, you know, something external. Like for myself, you know, it was always, man, my height, right? My height, my height, my height. Okay, yeah, I'm a good looking dude. Okay, yeah, I got this. Yeah, I got that. But, you know, the height thing. And the reason I had that is because of my programming, my conditioning that, you know, women will only desire you if you have, you know, these six sixes, the six pack, the uh, six figures, the six feet tall, all these other attributes, six something else. I forget what the other six, two sixes are. But yeah, I was in a place where I found myself continuously harping on this you know, physical characteristics. And when I started speaking to others who were willing to open up about their own insecurities, I realized that most of them were physical, right? Damn, I think my nose is too big. I think I'm too dark skinned. I think my ears are too big. You know, I think I'm too tall uh, for my gender. I think I'm too this, I'm too that. Like it was just a whole bunch of external aspects of self. And I used to believe that all insecurity started from without or the outside. I used to believe that insecurity was about how we looked, how we were perceived, right? How other people will receive us physically, because that's the first part that we engage in when we have some sort of interaction with another human being. However, when I started digging a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper into my own insecurities, into my own sense of, you know, uh, unworthiness or beliefs of unworthiness, I started to realize something that was real interesting. I started to realize that the core of my insecurity had nothing to do with how I looked, not one bit. Even the, the, the biggest insecurity that I had or I thought I had was actually not my true insecurity. The true insecurity I had was a feeling of not being enough, not feeling adequate and this sounds so general, but when we look at it, it really is at the core of every single one of our insecurities. It's a belief that I am flawed, I am broken, something is wrong with me, therefore. And so we will look for reasons to say, see, that's the reason why I'm not good enough, right? I've seen the most beautiful women in the world who believe themselves to be ugly because of that one characteristic or that one trait. And in truth, what they're really looking at is, you know, a life from a lens of I'm broken, I'm faulty, something's wrong with me, right? There's shame that they're harboring, there's a guilt consciousness, whatever their own programming may be, that's the lens that they're viewing life from. They're viewing themselves from a broken self-image, really, right? And so when I started to do my own inner work, right, oh, there goes that word again, inner work, here we go, oh, he's going to talk about shadow work, yes, I'm going to get into it, why, because it matters more than just about anything else we could be talking about right now, right, so when I started to do that introspection, that inner work, and coming to terms with how I actually saw myself, not the way in which I justified it or wanted it to look, right, the way I presented it to the world, oh, Mr. Confident, he has, you know, no insecurity, when I really started to peel back, I realized that I was deeply insecure, now, when we look at the word insecure, it's pretty straightforward. It is, you know, a lack in, a lack of secure security, right? So we feel as if we're unsecure or we feel as if we're not safe. So therefore, if I felt insecurity by how I looked, I believe that that aspect of me is going to make me unsafe in the world, right? It's going to have me rejected in the world and rejection in certain time periods, I guess, would have been dangerous for our species. If you were rejected from your village and you were kicked out and you have to live by yourself, maybe it was a little harder to fend for yourself, right? But now living in this modern age, it seems that rejection shouldn't be so scary and yet we still hold on to the very same emotional responses to that perceived rejection. So for a guy like me, I think to myself, oh man, see, she doesn't want me because of my height. Rejection, that means, you know, I'm worthless. I'm a nobody. But in truth, it was actually my own belief that was telling the story already. It was nothing else besides my story. It's the story that I choose to tell or I've been telling over, you know, a lifetime, right? And even when we have like counter evidence, if we hold on to that insecurity, we will find ourselves continuously, perpetually getting right back into that very same cycle, right? Like Carrie, uh, Carrie Nicole and I had this conversation literally today on camera. So that piece of content should already be out. But we were talking about how, you know, even when you have an insecurity that is not based in reality and your actual experience is showing otherwise, so long as you hold on to that belief, it's going to be real to you, right? 
and it will manifest in a lot of ways. But for myself, it's like I never had any trouble with getting a girl or getting girls to like me or being desirable. I never in my entire life since I was a little, little kid. But yet I wanted to hold on to that story because it reaffirmed that true deeper insecurity. So the reason why I went on such a rant in this direction is because it is vital for us to understand what the actual core insecurity is. Like I believe getting to the root is going to be more powerful for us than just dealing at the surface level. Like you think, oh, I'm a skinny dude. I just need to go work out and then I'll no longer be insecure. That's not how that works. As a matter of fact, you would just become a buff dude with a lot more insecurities. Because you're thinking to yourself, damn, I'm buff now. People only like me because I'm buff, but uh, I still feel like I'm not enough. What's wrong with me? I should have it all figured out by now, right? If you think going to get the bag, right, is going to make you less uh, insecure, you got another thing coming because you're going to have the bag and insecurities. Just look at a multitude of your favorite rappers. So when I had this realization, it also brought me to a place where I said, okay, if I truly wants to rid these insecurities from my life, I have to face the core. And at the core of mine was that belief that I am broken, faulty. I am not good enough, that I have to earn love, that I have to earn the the affection and the approval of others in order for me to be adequate or enough. And that was a belief that was played out, obviously, from childhood. Not intentionally, of course, I don't think many parents would go out of their way and say, you are inadequate, you're not enough, but this is trained into our psyche. This is trained into our belief system from a very young age when we're supposed to be receiving this unconditionality, but then there are conditions that are placed upon our behavior. So if we act a certain way, then we don't get a response. If we act another way, then we get a response. And so we start to say, oh, in order for me to get this attention, in order for me to get this affection, to get this uh, acceptance, approval, I have to alter My personality, I have to alter the way that I show up. Maybe you're loud and you realize, oh, being loud is bad. It's not going to get you the rewards or it's not going to get you, um, it's not even a reward. It's just like basic human desire. It's not going to get you the affection, the attention, the, the, you know, the acceptance of your guardians or your parental figures. And so you begin to quiet yourself. Or maybe you're naturally quiet, but you realize that you have to be loud in order to get the attention of those around you. And so we start to create these habit structures based around how we're raised, right? And if you have additions such as, you know, religiosity and things of that nature, then it could add multiple different, actually it does and will add multiple layers of uh, unworthiness, inadequacy. If you have this image of God as being this conditional loving entity that only accepts you once you do certain things and you fit certain criteria, it will put you in a place where you feel that you can never be good enough, right? If you can't meet the expectations of the one who created you or the ones that brought you in, then surely you can meet nobody's expectations. And so those are the questions that we first have to ask, the places we have to dig into and go to and then start to uproot from that place. We have to start to unpack from that place, right? That's the foundational element. And for almost all of us, I think all of us at this point, right? Every person that I've had the opportunity uh, having a consultation with, any clients I've had, et cetera, it's all been rooted in this. This core belief of I am not good enough, this core belief of I am broken, I am faulty, I am fallen, I'm whatever words we want to put on it, it's the very same belief that I have to earn the love and the attention and the affection of others, which is really inversely, I have to earn my own love and attention and affection. Like we'll withhold love from ourselves. I used to do it more regularly than not. I used to wait until I got a certain accolade or did a certain thing until I would reward myself, right? These little reward systems. I would talk to myself mean, like I would talk to myself like a damn drill sergeant, you know, hammer away at myself, calling myself all kinds of crazy stuff uh, in order to quote unquote motivate myself. When in truth, all I was doing was demonstrating that, you know, tolerance or uh, that conditionality within my quote unquote love. And so these are, these are the questions we really have to get down to. And these are the answers that are going to pop up and you ask yourself then how do I get rid of it well 51% of the way and maybe 49 for you but half of the way at least is just the recognition and the honesty about what's going on right as soon as you can light or shed light on something you know what the problem is it's the equivalent of if you're in a dark room and you bump into something you keep bumping into something as you're walking or as you're moving through the room And you finally turn the light on and you see exactly what it is. You see how it's a bed frame in the way. 
right? Now you can make a decision of, am I going to take the bed frame out? Am I going to keep it in and keep just doing what I'm doing? Um, am I just going to let it be? Like you get to make a, a conscious decision because you see what's in front of you. And so the conscious decision that I made was obviously that I didn't want to live my life with those insecurities. I don't want to live my life with this belief system that I was not good enough or I was inadequate. And so I started to do the work. There's that word again, right? Do that inner work of changing the belief systems, of shifting what I believed in. A belief system is nothing more than a thought you continue to think over and over again. So every single belief system that you have can be, sh- can be changed, can be altered, can be shifted, but it has to be a decision upon your part. And there's a multitude of videos I've created on this subject of like how to change uh, your wiring, how to reprogram, etc. But it literally is as simple as once you see what it is that's in front of you, you make different decisions as far as do you want to keep this or not, right? Obviously different practices, meditation, this, that, and a third. However, for right now, oh, he's going to sell me something. This actually has nothing to do with this video. It's just I wrote a book, I published a book, and I am presenting this book to you for sale, which is doing me guilt free. So make sure to get yourself a copy of one of these and make sure to check out the content that I have on reprogramming your childhood beliefs, etc. If you want me to make a new video on the subject, I definitely will. I'll probably just get into it anyway, whether you ask for it or not. But um, yeah, I think it's just vital for us to get ourselves into a place where we are just being honest, brutally honest. Well, it's only brutal because it feels painful at first, right? Because we've been avoiding it for so long. But once we allow and accept it, we realize that it is actually the most wonderful experience that we could allow ourselves into. So there's that. And there's this. Doing me guilt free. Boom. Get yourself a copy immediately. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Peace.